Anytime you're taken into the lair of David Lynch's uh, club is, is a good festival for me. <laughs> well, it's funny, I used to live in Paris, in Goncourt, and I never came to the Champs-Élysées once, except to go to a Japanese restaurant. I think there are more art house cinemas on this little block than there are in Los Angeles. So, <laughs> so I have to give credit where it is due, yeah. I hate those kind of movies where the filmmaker won't tell you what it means and it's like, oh, it's up to you to figure it out. Usually that just bugs me because I think that they don't even know what, they're, <laughs> what it means. But uh, I, you know, so I made one of those movies that I normally hate, uh, but I had to just get it out of my system and, 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 and try something different. And for me, the, the question of what's real and what's not real isn't like an academic exercise in like, tricking the audience or something, it's to draw you in, just like when, you know, a normal, normal, you know, fictional psychological thriller. When I have a very dubious relationship with reality, and I think art is a subjective expression, you know, upon this reality. A lot of people ask about the sound design, it's, oh, it's great, how'd you find it, how'd you make it, and for me, it's, I'm one of the laziest filmmakers, I think, working today, and so most of, like, 95% of those sounds are just, taken from YouTube and then I just save the clip and then just steal the audio from things. So I never ever leave my pajamas when I'm doing sound design. The sound in the, in the movie is really what's going on in his head. I mean, you're questioning if it's in his head or if it's actually happening. So that sound is uh, just as important almost as what the actor's doing up there. What we see is what we hear. Yeah, for sure. I'm interested, I mean, I love thinking about the way we perform social identities, it's, it's like, it's, uh, you know, I don't know, I think there, it's that Godard quote about all films are documentaries of actors acting, you know, that, or, I mean, that's a, that's a bastardization of the quote, but that, I think I heard that probably when I was like 20 years old, and it was just like, you know, and I just was, that was my life, you know, I was just gonna be attracted to that idea because of the sort of layered aspect of that, and I, and I hap happened to, have decided to make a couple films that are about particularly women um, enacting roles and particular kinds of roles. I am absolutely attracted to the, you know, the looking at a face and thinking about all the sort of layers of performance and psychology that are going on while you're watching that person. And it happens to be that women, because oftentimes women are performing for the men that, that, are, uh, that are looking at them being me, or for the men in the audience, or men in general, or men on the sidewalk, et cetera, that kind of performance layer comes cl like a little bit more, uh, more sort of thoroughly, I guess. I've never passed the Bechdel test, not even close. Um, and part of me just kind of does that, and I, I, part of me wants to continue doing that just to, uh, just to bug people. I think. <laughs> with the Lona, which takes place in LA and, and, and takes place within the Iranian underworld, you know, I was very interested in the cultural, in the multicultural layers of Los Angeles. And I grew up between those two places and I'm not really Singaporean and I'm not really Australian. Um, and I wouldn't go to war for either of them. Um, but I, but, and, I'm, and I'm hugely unpatriotic. But I do like culture. And, uh, and Reza, who is the star and producer of the film, is Iranian. And, and, and he sort of came to me with the story of his uncle, who was a child soldier in the war, and who did live, uh, who miraculously survived, and did move to America, and did emigrate, and lived a version of the American dream. And after that, after he retired, he ended up killing himself. Um, and we wanted to sort of explore, well, what was this baggage that he had kept all of these years? A lot of times I watch films now as homework. Like, I should really watch this so I can be part of the conversation, I can understand everything. But if, it, if, if, and so those are really like, I just have to do it. But if I am just given, Joel, you have all day, what do you want to watch? I will probably watch Shark Tank or uh, Pawn Stars. These are American reality shows. Yeah, Pawn Stars. My guilty pleasure is French crime dramas. <laughs> yeah. and, I'm, and I'm developing a TV show out of this film, out of The Loner, that we've been asked to do. And so I've been watching a lot of gritty French crime drama, <laughs> like Engrenage. Uh -huh. And I think there's another one called The Witnesses. Yes. And uh, Netflix just made a terrible French TV show. 
It's awful. It's called Marseille. Don't watch it. It's so fucking stupid. Je ne regrette pas. Yes, same. I'll be a croak McDo. <laughs> yeah. It's the, they take the, the, the bun upside down and it's the, the white cheese. Oh, am I, how am I, say, how am I supposed to say it? Croque monsieur. At, at McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>